Houston, thank you very much for agreeing to this conversation. Yeah. Can I ask you before we kick off just to introduce who you are and your involvement in the MOOCs, your institutional affiliation or not? And then we'll I'll kick us off. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Heaton Baggett. I am currently with the African Centre for Cities, um, both as a project manager and as a kind of part-time lecturer. Um, I, my involvement with the MOOCs has been basically to kind of configure and coordinate the development of this MOOC that you're watching, which is the MOOC around smart cities. Great, thank you so much. So, <clears throat> Heaton, when it comes to the concept of queer, I think in the African usage, it's very often conflated with issues or perceived to be synonymous with issues of sexuality or gender identity. What, how would you define the term and what do you believe is the utility of this term for mm. our smart MOOC? Yeah, I think it's a really good question, Matt. I mean, as a really, and I think it's, it's a really important question to kind of, for all of us to consider. Queer as a kind of framework of thinking has really in, in recent years started to grow out of the kind of their original sexual and gender framing. Um, for me and through the various projects that I've done, um, it's become a really useful way to think because it allows and maybe even implores us to kind of explore the potential of multiplicities, of manyness. So at the heart of queer ring, um, and I'll speak to that just now, um, if I can say so, is the capability to develop ways to think over and above and around the normative constructs that have really kind of constricted and hampered the way in which we can think about urban, the urban in cities across Africa. Great, thank you so much for that. So why is it important to consider this, this concept of queerness um, in the conception, the design and the planning for smart cities across Africa? Mm -hmm. I think to begin with, what I'd like to do is make a distinction um, between queerness and queer ring. This distinction in a way helps us to kind of move beyond the cliche of it being a condition. And let's face it, that condition in, has already kind of has gathered a lot of kind of negativity. And in that negativity has really limited the ways in which and the ways in which we can think. So to queer, in a way, requires us then to invite many people to think with us. But to queer is to kind of really to think about its kind of multiplicity, um, to imagine cities that are made up with different types of communities that can make it both sustainable and active. Um, and so partly what I'd like to do here is also try to think of a provocation that I've been developing and thinking about as a way to connect, like to develop a connective tissue to align a kind of type of thinking. Um, this link, it's kind of tenuous right now because it's still in formation, is to link notions of queering to notions of Ubuntu and Ubuntu being a kind of framework of thinking of community that kind of articulates itself in the kind of Southern African region. Both in a sense have can, concerns to the notions of making relations with and for community building. Um, and in this sense, what we do is to kind of think ourselves into a kind of smart way of thinking. And that smarter way of thinking really starts to start to maybe help us think how we can disrupt um, normative systems or systems of norms. And this is really spoken to in the video that you will be seeing with Nix and Danielle. And Nix really, really speaks to this notion of the disruption of power. Okay. Yeah. So I think <clears throat> I really appreciate um, the use of the Ubuntu uh, concept, which is very much an, Afro, an African one and sort of um, an African normative framework. Um, but given that we are located within Africa, where there is a great deal of conservatism and, and at times quite um, a resistance to the imposition of so-called Western 
uh, norms. What would you say to those who push back against this concept of queering um, mm. that we are advancing? Yeah, another another really lovely question. I mean, I think it really is. I don't know if I would push back against the kind of opposition, but rather invite it into a conversation. Invite it to help kind of discuss, to kind of start to understand the reasons and the frameworks that populate this opposition. Because in many sense, right, what we need to develop, and this is kind of what we're sort of queering and queer theory comes out of, is to, to have empathy, have an empathy for a stance that is kind of difficult and opposed and stuck. Um, and in that sense, the kind of the project of queer is to find useful and helpful ways to kind of shift people out of the kind of strictures and the norm they are stuck in. Okay. So you've spoken about querying as inviting us to think about urban communities in, in sort of as multiplicities and in yeah. multiplicities of being. So I think position yourself or put yourself in the shoes of an African um, city official and help them understand why or to whom it is beneficial to adopt such an approach. This is such a, I mean, your questions are really good. I mean, and again, again, as a as a student watching this, uh, this MOOC, this is something that I think must be, I mean, I'm assuming is already on your mind, right? In a way, there's there are two kind of responses to this. There's, there's a very kind of, there's the obvious response in the sense that the, it's kind of beneficial to everyone, really. We all, we all will benefit. This draws on the kind of idea of building connections with notions of community and complexity that organizes the ways in which we can imagine that we have been told to imagine Ubuntu, this idea of building complex, healthy, sustainable communities. And queer does that because what queer says is that there are many different types of ways of being. Um, you know, the other response is that there really is no response to this, really, because it leans into the fact that we need to take the time to think beyond the limited cliches that frame the way in which we see and think about ourselves in urban spaces. Um, and so, yeah, it's a kind of, it's a, it's a kind of, it's a, it's a fantastic question that I don't think has a simple answer, but I think it has many different answers. Okay. So, Heaton, I think a lot of city officials sort of contend with the nuts and the bolts and they have to report on sort of progress milestones, etc. How would you help them get in touch with the substantive component of, of this seemingly ephemeral um, notion that may to their minds, not immediately be as conducive to sort of effective measurement. How can African cities track their progress towards establishing queer cities? Yeah, I think that this, this these notions of being effective and kind of um, measurement are the things that we need to look at rather than be looking at kind of queer. I think that the kind of quantitative constructs that precede the ways in which we understand ourselves in urban spaces are ways of measure or kind of systems of measure that we were not, we did not have a hand in creating. And so what queer does is, and like a lot of other things that we're seeing, is we really needing to understand ourselves in a more qualitative way. What is it to understand ourselves beyond statistics and beyond kind of graphs and, and numbers and see ourselves as sort of complex communities that have complex needs. So, you know, I think the ways in which we measure ourselves in cities um, has become in a sense, I would say, I would go so far as saying hopelessly ineffective because it requires us to be in spaces in a way that was not necessarily designed for the sizes and the types of communities that are now living in our cities. And we see this across the continent right now. We see more and more communities who are finding their voices and in their finding their voices, they're finding agency. And they're wanting to build the cities that they want to live in. And so developing consensus around normative constructs is increasingly, increasingly difficult. 
once they've understood the agency and the world they need to live in, we need to imagine new ways in which we ass assess notions of conducivity and effectiveness. And this is, in a sense, what this module is trying to do as a whole, is to kind of build a connection to other ways of understanding notions of smartness and requires us to do a bit more work creatively, more imaginatively, to think with a bit more complexity. Mm. We need to we need to welcome these critics, right? We need to welcome the opposition because that opposition forms the inquiry of the landscape, forms the kind of landscape. Now, we need to welcome the critics and the kind of opposition to this way of thinking because these these kind of arguments form the landscape of our inquiry of the ways in which we can play and ways in which we can really build cities that are kind of unique and exciting. I really appreciate that, Heaton. And there's a great deal that I've taken away from your input. I think on the one hand, I really um, like the caution that you give to relying excessively on analytics and really urging for the qualitative to be uh, factored into mm. um, that sort of sense making so that we understand what is important to the people who inhabit these cities? What are their priorities? I think it's also um, just lift our gaze a little bit away from sort of the terminology that we rely on mm. excessively, such as vulnerable communities. Mm. And what queering is asking us to do is to do the fact checking of who inhabits urban spaces within the African continent and who are those populations, who are the communities, um, and, and what are their priorities and what are their imperatives. Um, so I really appreciate this conversation and I hope that the emerging um, school of urban scholars um, mm. draws deeply from your insights. Yeah, and I think you know, this is really, this conversation really supports what, what you will see in the conversation that Danielle and Nix have also as a kind of, as a way in which to really bring a few more voices to speak into this concept as opposed to relying on a particular expert. And so what we're presenting in this kind of section of the module is four different voices, yours with the questions that you're asking, which are really key, my sense of where it sits, and then Danielle's and Nick's kind of, makes this really kind of quite, quite tactile sense of what queer means in a city. Thanks very much.